Okay, guys, prop this card. Hey guys, Prophetess Caldwell here from House of Many Mantles Global and Angelic Finds Boutique. Listen, I have a very uh, serious warning for the body of Christ for the month of Tevet. Yes, the month of Tevet falls in December, the end of December until January. It's about roughly 29 or 30 days. But the Lord has a major warning for us as the body of Christ regarding this particular season, this particular month. And in this month, the Lord is saying there are higher levels of witchcraft. The Lord showed me a series of dreams. Um, and even on today where I had um, another dream, but the Lord has been showing me uh, what the word of the Lord is from the gates of heaven and the word of the Lord that's being released to his people is that there are higher levels of witchcraft that is amongst the body of Christ that are amongst believers as we are coming close to the purpose and the promise of of God. And so whatever God has promised you, beloved, the enemy knows that this is the season where you're about to accomplish those things and reach those goals. And so he's trying to send a particular type of witchcraft to us. And so the Lord says, beware of secret and hidden agendas. And so God is getting ready to release to us the secrets and hidden agendas snares that the enemy is trying to be set before us right and so the lord showed me former um people the former you know former things people places situationships that we were once involved in from our past the enemy is going to use those things to try to connect again um anything familiar he's going to try to use to connect again right Anything um, uh, from our past, former life, friendly foes, friendly fire. These are the, the areas that the enemy is wanting to use against us. And so the Lord says, do not let them reconnect with you. Those who have been in your past, those people who once had your phone number, once had your address, the Lord says, do not answer the phone for them. Do not open the door for them. Do not open the spiritual doors for them. Do not agree with any conversation that they may have. And the Lord showed me the way that they're going to connect is after you know, many, many, many years of not speaking to these people, they're going to just suddenly randomly send you a message or a voicemail saying, hey, you are in my spirit. Hey, you are on my mind. Hey, you were in my thoughts. And they're going to try to be, um, the Lord says they're going to be under the guise of like intercessors. They're going to say, I pray all is well for you. I'm praying for you. I just want you to know that God showed me you or something of that nature and the lord says do not fall for it it is not of him it is a familiar spirit that is trying to get connected to you to keep you from flourishing and to slaughter the blessing that you are about to walk in and so the lord says that there are mainly three types of witchcraft that the enemy is trying to use um, the, or there's three forms of witchcraft and one of those things is rebellion the Bible says rebellion is witchcraft is as the sin of witchcraft and so rebellion is witchcraft against God right because rebellion is um, or the rebel is not submitted to God and so just like Saul tried to manipulate God and get the blessing of God without submitting to God, uh, that's manipulation. And the second type of uh, or form of witchcraft is manipulation and control. And the third type is, you know, if it's unrepented, it can result in a person imploring the power of an evil spirit. And beloved, the Lord says jealousy is one of the primary motivations for witchcraft, right? If you remember in 1 Samuel chapter 18, it said that in verse 1, um, 
It says, and it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul have slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth as the saying displeased him, right? I believe it wasn't even the fact that David had actually slain more than Saul. It was the fact that the women were disclaiming that David was better than Saul. So this was jealousy. David had the the favor of the women and Saul did not like it. And so that jealousy, if you continue to read in chapter 18, verse nine actually says, and Saul eyed David from that day forward. He had an evil eye towards him. He already had his heart uh, turned bitter towards him. As a matter of fact, it says that, um, I think in the next verse, in verse 10, it says, and it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul because Saul's heart, it was no turning back. It, ha it was relented to do what it was going to do against David. Um, and it said that the evil spirit had prophesied in the midst of the house and David played with his hand as, uh, as at other times. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand and Saul cast the javelin for he said, I will smite David. So now he had this spirit of murder. He was going to kill David. Of course, we know how that worked out. David avoided out of his presence twice. Um, and it just really made the more God rescued David, the, the more bitter and callous Saul grew. And so the Lord says that when the enemy tries to bring these familiar spirits back into our presence to beware, because the purpose of these evil spirits is to prophesy evil unto us. They're coming under the guise. Let me just say this. You stop talking for a reason. So the Lord says, don't forget why you stopped speaking to these people. Don't forget why you cut them off in the first place. Don't forget what you saw regarding them um, or the place, you know, people, places, things, whatever it is. There was a reason you stopped talking. There was a reason there was a disconnection. So the Lord says he's going to bring that back to your remembrance so that you do not allow this familiar spirit to be attached to these people to come back into your life because all it's going to do is prophesy against the goodness of the Lord that he has promised to um, deliver into your life. Also, in the same chapter of Samuel, 1 Samuel 18 and verse 17, it says that Saul said to David, Behold, my elder daughter Merab, her will I give thee to wife. Only be thou valiant for me and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul said, let not my hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be up. So David, um, Saul thought that, okay, if I can't kill him with my own hands, maybe I can put him in a situation where someone else can do it for me. And so this is why you want to be careful with former people, familiar people, and friendly foes. The Lord says, watch out for these three um, groupings of people because the enemy is trying to bring them back around and they they're not coming with um good intentions but evil intentions and so um it also said that and saul commanded his servants saying commune with david secretly witchcraft is a secret thing it's usually done in secret uh witches won't let you know you know most of the time they won't let you know that this is what they're doing and someone who it has grown callous against you will not even let you know that they've grown callous David didn't know that Saul had a problem with him. In 1 Samuel 18, David was out doing all these things to try to win Saul's heart and affection, you know. And here he is, every time he came back successful, David was envied even more, hated all the more. So you could be doing these things to please people, but the Lord says, don't be a people pleaser because you'll only end up pleasing trying to please someone who cannot be pleased the more the the more good you do for them the hate, the more the hate for you it grows so you want to be led by the spirit um, especially wisdom in this season because of the higher level of witchcraft practices that you know even some blind witches they don't even identify as being a witch they think they're christian but their behavior their rebellious lifestyle um, their bitter lifestyle 
uh, all exemplifies witchcraft, right? So um, you want to be careful not to let the enemy in those doors. In 1 Samuel um, chapter 18, also in verse 23, it said that, And Saul's servants spake those words in the ears of David. And David said, Seemeth it to you a light thing to be a king, a king's son-in-law, seeing that I am a poor man and lightly esteemed. Saul was yet the more afraid of David and Saul became David's enemy continually. No matter how humble you can be in front of these people. No, you, I mean, like I said, the Lord knows um, why you cut these people off. You know why you cut these people off. And God is going to remind you, hey, don't bring these people back into your life. This is why you let them go in the first place. Um, no matter how humble you try to be before them, no matter how pleasing you try to be towards them, there you have a continual enemy in this person, um, you know, because the spirit that they're operating in, they need deliverance. And until they receive deliverance, it's always going to be a turmoil between you or them or whatever the case may be, whether it be family, friends, co-worker, it doesn't matter who they are. If they're in the past, let them stay there, okay? Um, and so, yeah, it said that Saul became an enemy continually to David. And here David is, he's like, I'm a poor man. I'm, I'm just lightly esteemed. Please, David didn't know the songs that the women were singing about him and the hype that was going around town about him. He just tried to stay humble in the sight of Saul's eyes. But all Saul could do was focus on what the people were saying about David. Um, in chapter 22 of 1 Samuel, in verse 6, it says, When Saul heard that David was discovered, and the men that were with him, um, having, a, having his spear in his hand, and all his servants were standing about him, then Saul said unto his servants that stood about him, Here now, you Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards? So he tried to make the people say, Look, I can give you more than David, so why are you protecting him? Um, you know, why are you conspiring against me and not showing me where he is? And in verse 9, it said that then answered Doug, the Edomite, which was set over the servants of Saul. Y'all know Edom always had beef with, with Israel, right? And so this guy, who knows how he became a servant for Saul. But in any case, he was there. And he said, yeah, I saw the son of Jesse coming. I know where he is. I know where he's been and I know what he's doing. And so this is pretty much the same spirit that the enemy is using today in this season, beloved, in the month of Tibet. The enemy is using people that have these open doors with unforgiveness, sowing discord, bitterness and the like, you know, jealousy, contention, using people with those type of open doors to bring about a familiar spirit on them to uh, utterly cause you to fall. Um, and so this is why the Lord says um, to be mindful of those in your past trying to creep back in. The Lord showed me a dream where he said, that the enemy was going to use our our address and our phone numbers that past relationships past connections um they still have access to because our numbers have not changed our address has not changed and so they're putting these numbers and these addresses you know this information on evil altars and the lord is saying he's getting ready to expose it and illuminate these evil intentions of these people so when they pop up when the lord shows you them that's him exposing the enemy through that person. So pray for that person because they don't know they're being used by the enemy and also cancel the assignment that this person was supposed to um, exploit. Also, in the next chapter of 1 Samuel chapter 23, um, if you go back and read these chapters, read, go back and read this stuff, y'all. Go back and read 1 Samuel 18, 22, and 23. Um, but in verse 7, it says, And it was told Saul that David was come to Keilah. And Saul said, God have delivered him into my hand, for he is shut in by entering into a town that have gates and bars. And Saul called all the people together to war to go down to Keilah to besiege David and his men. And David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him. And he said to Abathar the priest, bring hither the ephod. Saul was practicing witchcraft, y'all, magic, mischief, evil, right? To um, 
try to bring harm against David. The, the Lord says these people from your past that are trying to mysteriously pop up, it's not by chance or coincidence. The enemy is summoning them because he can. They have an open door to be used by the devil. This is why we don't want open doors because we never want to be an agent for the enemy, but we want to be in all things used by God so that God gets the glory out of our vessels. And so the enemy is illegally using God's people as vessels because of these open doors that are, which is basically unrepented sin. Um, and so Saul secretly practiced mischief, evil, wickedness against David. Um, and so we want to make sure that um, we're just walking by the word of God, the power of God, the glory of God, and not by sight, not by our own intentions. Many wicked um, this in the world are using the evil eye to gain knowledge, but we don't want to get knowledge from any evil eye or our own eyes, but we want the eye of the Lord to to reveal and expose um, anything that we need to know. And so, beloved, I just want to tell you that I wanted to release this word it was as it was on me so strongly. Um, the Lord wants me to make sure I let you know that the purpose of the enemy doing this is to make you do no great exploits so that you won't do any greatness that God has ordered for you to do. Remember in Matthew 13, 55, it said that the people said, is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brother is such and such and his sisters is such and such. And um, it said that they were offended in him why they were offended because of who they thought he should be because of who they remember him as being and so again the enemy is wanting to bring people from your past remember they're in your past because they represent who you used to be or a place you used to be in or a space you used to operate in and so now that you've grown these outgrown affiliations why would you recon reconnect <laughs> why would you reconnect and so um in verse 58 of Matthew 13, it said that he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. The goal of the enemy in this season is that you do not do any mighty works, that you do not do greater works than than these that the Holy Spirit has done. Um, and so just remember, a familiar spirit is a demon, guys. It's a demon that is summoned usually by a medium or some type of witchcraft um, with the intention that the spirit summon uh, will obey his or her commands. You, you, you know, often familiar spirits are believed to be the spirits of people, deceased, but it's not. It's necromancy. It's, it's, it's evil. It's wicked. It's not your, your dead grandmother, your dead father, your dead mother or cousin. Because remember in Luke 16, Jesus told the parable that through the story of Lazarus and the rich man, there is a great gulf between us so that those who wish to come over from here to you will not be able and those from here will not be able to cross to you so the de the deceased cannot cross those spiritual barriers so what the familiar spirit is is it was familiar it was it, you know your dead loved one uh, never rebuke this familiar spirit so it knows a lot of personal information regarding your loved one so when you connect with this familiar spirit you're thinking you're connecting to that loved one because it knows information or it has things that reminds you or says things or smells like something that's familiar that your loved one once walked with or in or spoke and so beloved um, God has a future for you but Satan reminds us of the past. And so what does the Bible say about people's past? He says our past has changed because in God's eyes, we have no past, only a great future. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Genesis 19, 26. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Beloved, when you um, look back on your past, you begin to disintegrate. It kills you. It kills you. And like, so, like um, Lot's wife, 
don't look back when God washes you makes you a new creature and all old things about you have passed away why would you want to connect to an old season an old version of you when you're you're supposed to be going from glory to glory to glory becoming like new so I pray for you I pray for everyone that is in a season where the old thing the former thing is trying to be that little birdie wandering trying to fly by to uh, see what you're doing monitor you and surveil you to because this is the enemy's way of getting someone getting a little birdie in your ear to watch and monitor you so that he can um, you know deceive you some kind of way so that you utterly fall so i pray proverbs 26 and 2 that as the bird by wandering as the swallow by flying so the curse causeless shall not come that little birdie that's trying to connect with you from your past shall not be able to come you will not open the door your address which represents a place or space where you once lived they won't have access to the phone number uh, represents the time you were once connected they won't have access to so I pray right now in Jesus name we'll call it out of our hallelujah God pray I pray for these in which that you are dealing with that you are doing a new thing with that they they shall prosper they will not fall but the enemy surrounding them will utterly fall David said though there be many enemies around me I will not fear and so i pray for them right now in the name of jesus that they will not fear in your name jesus i pray amen and amen